If you want to break into the cloud industry, don't apply to any jobs until you watch this video. What we're going to talk about today might be a little bit controversial, but I feel it's important for you to know if you really want to land that first cloud job. Hi, I'm Anna, and here at Cloud Career Mentor, we help aspiring tech professionals get well-paid jobs in the cloud industry through high-quality online courses and mentorship. Today, we're going to talk about why some cloud beginners get hired and why others get ghosted by recruiters. I will also give you a quick quiz you can take to find out if you're ready to get your first cloud job. This episode is packed with value and will give you a better chance of getting hired, so make sure you watch till the end. We talk to a lot of beginners like you who want to break into the cloud industry, and notice that there's one big difference between cloud beginners who fail to secure a job and those who go on to receive multiple job offers. What's this difference, I hear you ask? To answer that question, let me tell you a quick story about a cloud beginner called Eric. Eric works as an accountant and decides that he needs a career change. After doing some research, Eric decides that he really wants to get a job in tech, specifically the cloud industry. To achieve this goal, he begins following some tech influencers on YouTube and TikTok to get insights into what he needs to do to secure that job offer. Every tech influencer Eric follows tells him that all he needs to do is to complete the Cloud Practitioner Certification and the AWS Solution Architect Certification. Once he gets those certs, he will easily land that sweet, sweet cloud job, earning six figures, working remotely and sipping margaritas on the beach. And so he does exactly what they say. He gets his two certifications and begins applying for jobs. He's optimistic because he is ready to begin his new career in an exciting new field. And then the good news, he starts receiving responses from his applications. But as soon as he opens the emails, he realizes that these are rejection letters. The rejection letters start to pile up and then all of a sudden it dawns on Eric that this industry might be a bit tougher to break into than the tech influencers made him believe. Here at Cloud Career Mentor, we've spoken to a lot of cloud beginners who've had very similar experiences to Eric. It's normal to receive a lot of rejection letters when you're trying to break into a new industry. Hell, it's normal to receive rejection letters even if you do have experience in that industry. At the start of this video, I promise to tell you the difference between cloud beginners who only receive rejection letters and those who actually get job offers. The answer is quite simple, really. The difference is that those who end up being successful have the right mindset and attitude. What do I mean by this? Let me explain. But before I do, it's come to my attention that over 40% of you watching right now haven't subscribed yet. Why not? If you're on YouTube, definitely hit the subscribe button now so you don't miss out on future content. While you're down there, why not hit the like button too? Trust me, you'll feel so much better after you do. What were we talking about before? Oh yeah, I remember now. We noticed that if you're a cloud beginner who faces rejection after rejection, you can react in one of two ways. The first way you can react is with what we call the disenfranchised mindset. We've noticed that people with a disenfranchised mindset will complain that there are no entry-level cloud jobs. They complain that employers aren't willing to take a chance on beginners. They do a lot of complaining about the cloud industry. But when we talk to them and ask them about what tech projects they've done, we quickly realize that they are not nearly as skilled as they think they are and have not actually developed the skills that the employers are looking for. This, of course, explains why they receive so many rejection letters. It's called the disenfranchised mindset because the people who have this mindset feel like everything is out of their control, that there's nothing that they can do to improve themselves and their circumstances, which means that they only have one option, and that is to complain. Now, let's compare the disenfranchised mindset to the second way you can react after getting rejected by recruiters. If like Eric, you've been receiving a lot of rejection letters, you can react with what we call the empowered mindset. People who have this mindset are more likely to take a proactive approach to their life and to their career. For example, after getting multiple rejection emails, they will begin looking more closely at the job descriptions to find out what skills and technologies employers are actually looking for. Once they understand what the employers want, 
they will begin putting in the work to learn these technologies at a deeper level. By doing this, they begin to improve themselves by learning the right technical skills and building high quality projects which help them to stand out from all the other candidates. This causes them to be more attractive to employers until they begin receiving interview calls and eventually they're able to secure those job offers. Now the good news is that if you find yourself complaining about a lack of entry level roles or the fact that employers aren't taking a chance on beginners, we've designed a simple quiz you can take to see if you have the skills that employers are looking for. There are basically six main technologies you need to learn to stand a chance of receiving a job offer. I'm going to list out all the technologies, but what I want you to do is to rate yourself out of 10 for each of these technologies in the comment section below, with one being that you have absolutely no experience with that technology and 10 being that you feel confident with the technology and have completed multiple high quality projects with it. Now, I want you to be completely honest with yourself. And if you're listening to an audio podcast, I want you to go on YouTube and drop your comment there. I'm really excited to read your responses. Okay, you ready? Let's begin. The first skill employers are looking for is your ability to navigate the Linux command line. What would you rate yourself out of 10? One, being that you've never written a command in the Linux terminal and 10 being that you're a complete Linux wizard. The second technology is AWS or Azure. How confident do you feel deploying complex infrastructure with AWS? Do you understand how networking works? Security? Rate yourself based on your confidence using the AWS console to deploy infrastructure, with one being that you've never actually created anything in the AWS console, and 10, being you feel very confident deploying infrastructure in the AWS console and you can complete any task that you're given. For bonus points, please give examples of the projects you've done in the comments. The third technology employers are looking for is experience with infrastructure as code tools like Terraform. How would you rate yourself out of 10 with this technology, with one being you've heard of it but you haven't actually used it? and 10 being you've completed multiple high quality projects with it. The fourth technology I want you to rate yourself out of 10 is CICD. One being you've heard of it, but you've never used it. And 10 being you can create complex CICD pipelines across multiple environments. The fifth technology you should rate yourself on is a programming language like Python. One being you haven't touched Python before and 10 being you feel comfortable building complex applications with it on your own. And the final technology I want you to rate yourself on is Docker. With one being you haven't done anything at all with Docker and 10 being you're a Docker pro. Please remember to post your ratings in the comments below because I'm really curious to find out what your experience level is. Feel free to rewind to catch all the technologies I just mentioned. Now, by doing this exercise, it will allow you to see where your weak points are so you know what you need to focus on to improve your chances of standing out to cloud recruiters. If you want a free guide that not only gives you a roadmap of what technologies to learn to break into the cloud industry, but also what the three simple steps you can take to improve your chances of getting hired, then download our free guide called Three Simple Steps to Your First Cloud Job. Everyone who's read this has told us how useful this guide has been to them, and I'm sure it will be very useful to you too. Download it now. The link is in the description below. Listen, the next point I'm about to make is really important, so I need you to pay close attention. One of the reasons the disenfranchised mindset we talked about earlier is so dangerous is that it really is a selfish mindset. It's all about what you can get rather than what you can give. In 1961, John F. Kennedy was sworn in as the 35th president of the United States. In his inaugural speech, there was a powerful line he delivered that I think applies to you as a beginner trying to break into the cloud industry. And it goes like this. Ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. This is a powerful line because it can be applied to your mindset and approach to breaking into tech. So here's how I would adapt it for cloud beginners. Ask not what cloud employers can do for you, ask what you can do for cloud employers. Those who have the disenfranchised mindset are always asking what cloud employers can do for them. Can employers give them six-figure jobs? Can employers let them work remotely? Can employers take a chance on them even though they have minimal skills? They never ask what skills or value they bring to employers. 
This is why I like those of you with the empowered mindset, because rather than asking what employers can do for you, you ask meaningful questions like, what skills are employers looking for? How can you get those skills? How can you make yourself so good that employers have no choice but to hire you? How can you be the best? You understand that by prioritizing your skills and building high quality projects, you'll become a more attractive candidate to recruiters and therefore become more likely to get that job offer. So if you find yourself complaining and acting with a disenfranchised mindset, I want you to switch to a more empowered mindset and understand that you can build up the skills that employers are looking for, which will make you a way more valuable candidate. This way, an employer won't need to take a chance on you because you'll become the sort of candidate they would be clambering over each other to hire because you're simply the best candidate. If you have an empowered mindset and want to get access to the high quality projects, that will help you stand out from the candidates that have a disenfranchised mindset, then check out our program at cloudcareermentor.com. Link is in the description below. With this program, you not only get access to 20 plus high quality cloud projects, but you also get access to a supportive private community that will help answers to any questions if you get stuck. You also get regular access to a mentor on a one-on-one basis. This program has been designed to give you all the tools you need to be successful. To find out more, simply go to cloudcareermentor.com. I know we bang on about the importance of building high quality projects and you might be asking yourself, how can we be confident that high quality projects are the way to get hired? Well, click here to watch this video where we interviewed a cloud beginner who successfully made the career change from quality analyst to cloud engineer after following our program. In this conversation, she mentions that the hiring manager told her that one of the reasons he gave for the job was because he was really impressed with the high quality projects she had completed as part of our program. This is what helped her to stand out from the other candidates. I encourage you to give it a watch because she shares some amazing insights that will help you on your cloud journey. See you in the next one.